sorry. <laughs> I'm watching all the cows run down the line. Today I'm gonna do a short video, short video, I don't make short videos. I'm gonna do a video on uh, does your generator that you use, there is a neutral wire that a lot of people say needs to be disconnected if you're gonna use it in a whole house system. Is that true? And it gets confusing. There are a lot of videos online that try to explain this and some of them are electrical engineers and it gets real confusing and they're really long so I'm just going to give you this short, simple answer. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'll just run around the property and do some updates. I got a bunch going on. Don't forget, I've got the new preparedness series that's being launched. Go over to uh, YouTube at Savage Prepping. You can just type in at Savage Prepping in Google and you'll find it. I hear John. John just got here. I'm getting ready to do a full series on generators and my video is going to be different than most people. Because I'm going to tell you, a lot of people will tell you to buy this, and, this, and I'm going to tell you to sort of scale it down. So, uh, first of all, let me just go ahead and I'll go ahead. Yesterday I went out here and actually removed the neutral wire from my generator that I plug into my house. So, uh, anyways, I'll, I'll give you an up. Let me get John going on a few projects, and then I'll come back and we'll talk about this, and I'll make it real simple. We've been out here working all morning. Sorry, John just left. Been up since 5 30 actually did a little deer hunting whatever okay so let, let me explain this generator this neutral bond they call it a floating or a bonded neutral you only want to have one system that's all you have to understand you only have to have you only need one system that neutral bond needs to be connected to the ground if within once during that whole system so if you're running a generator out here in the field and you're plugging in and running power tools or whatever it is, yes, that neutral and ground need to be bonded together because that completes the whole circuit. That is considered one system. A generator by itself is considered a system. Now, where you need to remove that neutral bond is when you make that generator part of another system. Okay, let me cut in and make this real simple. This is a generator. If I plug in, an extension cord and put that extension cord through my window and then plug in anything I want via that extension cord into that, that is a system. Therefore, there needs to be a contact point between the ground and the neutral wire. However, as soon as I hook up my generator whole house plug, so as soon as I take this and now I run this into the generator, which then runs over here, and that feeds and that feeds into my panel that now this generator becomes part of this one system and so what you need to do is you need to disconnect the neutral wire tape it up because otherwise you're going to have oops <laughs> otherwise you're going to have two systems connected at the same time again generator by itself is one system you plug an extension cord in there you run whatever you want your refrigerator whatever that is a system, neutral and ground, just leave it. The majority, 99.9% .9 of generators are shipped this way. If you plug it into your, if you have a direct feed with an interlock switch and it goes into your panel, your panel has that connection already, so you need to disconnect that. Got it? Hope that makes it a little bit more oh, simple. Man. Hi. <laughs> uh, first of all, I'm sorry for the annoying pump noise in the background, but we're in the middle of a horrible drought and I'm running my high pressure pump 570 feet up to my fields so I can feed my deer and I'm irrigating all those fields plus I'm irrigating stuff around here. So uh, I'm in our, sorry, oh this gravel hurts. In our preparation series that we're doing, uh, one of my next videos is going to be on generators. And one of the things I think that a lot of people do is I think a lot of them over buy generators and that's what I'll talk about the different sizes and I'm really concerned about fuel consumption if you start to compare the fuel consumption if you look at Hurricane Helene that's where a lot of people messed up they had these big beautiful 13,000 watt generators but they basically used a gallon per hour some of these things if you look at the fuel consumption I know everyone's talking about look at your watts but I'm telling you look at your fuel consumption this thing will run for about two hours per gallon so this one 
um, has a four gallon tank and this thing will run anywhere from eight to 12 hours just depending on the load capacity. I put it in eco mode and uh, just depending, when you're running a generator you want to be, you want to be real cautious with what you're running. You just don't want to run everything in your house. Um, you know, instead of running the AC unit, open your windows instead of, you know, and if you don't have LED light bulbs in every single socket in your house, get LED light bulbs. I mean, LED, perfect example is a regular incandescent uses 60 watts and LED uses five. So for one light bulb incandescent, you could put all the light bulbs in your house and run all the light bulbs in your house with LEDs. Get some, replace all your bulbs with LEDs if you're gonna get a generator. That's rule number one. So how do you do this? Actually, Champion's really good on their website. Um, they have a video that shows you how to do it. Now they make it seem a little bit easier. Basically there's six screws on the front of this generator and hopefully you can find a video on yours that do it. And you gotta turn this thing all the way upside down. And there's one bolt up under here where the ground and the neutral connect on that one bolt. And what I need to do is I need to disconnect that, uh, take the white wire off and wrap electrical tape around that white wire so it's not gonna touch anything and then I won't have any issues. At that point, this wool, I'm supposed to legally, I'm supposed to put a new label on here that says that it's um, not neutrally bonded or grounded. So that's so you understand that. So you don't wanna take this out now and take it off and run it on a job site because there's no, again, no longer is there a neutral ground to this system. Step two. Gently pull the front panel outward and locate the white bond wire. Step three, the white and green yellow wires are connected to the panel to bond the neutral. With a seven millimeter socket, remove only the white wire and leave the green yellow wire in place. Completely cover the end of the white wire with electrical tape so it won't come into contact with anything else behind the panel. Replace all panel screws and tighten securely and reverse these steps to convert your unit back to bonded neutral. So this is where it really can pay to have an electrician come out and do this for you. Uh, have them come in, install the interlock, install the generator switch and make sure everything's right. But let me give you another tip and that is uh, go buy one of these plug testers. Now the plug tester, they're not that expensive. Once you, I want you to go ahead and shut off everything, do a test run with your generator if you have an interlock and then go and test a couple outlets in your house and it'll tell you, is there, are there any issues? More than likely, you should be good. Now, in the video I have coming up, the generator video I'm gonna do, I found probably one of the best Hurricane Helene videos, aftermath videos, that goes directly into what I was saying in my previous video. Everything, every single thing that this guy talks about, he was without power for 12 days, internet for 14 days, and I'm gonna put a link to his video. Everything that he was talking about, I, I start to cover in this series about the amount of gas you should have, what size generator you should have, should you be buying these big generators, which I don't think you should do. I'll show you what you should be doing and how to buy the right generator. We'll talk about Generac, we'll talk about whole home systems. Are they worth it? Is it a good investment? We'll cover a bunch of that stuff. And I'll also show you a couple of my top picks for the size of generator that you might need because it's gonna surprise you. So make sure, please do me a favor, go over to Savage Prepping at YouTube. It will help us out. Just subscribe to that channel. If you didn't watch my last video, I got a hawk out here terrorizing my chickens. That's why they're not out. They're a brand new run that we built them. They only come out if like we're out here supervising them. They're a bunch of babies. Uh, a video I have coming up if you want to subscribe and make sure you catch this one. Uh, I had my, uh, my grader come out and he, we brought in, we braised this area up almost 12 inches. Two days ago, my concrete guys came out and they built this form. This is going to be a poured slab. This is 18 by 40. The footer is going to be 6 by 12. You can see the rebar inside of it. And then John and I, before they did all this work, John and I came in and we dug in a sewer pipe. We dug in a sewer pipe, uh, a water pipe, and an extra two inch just in case they want to snake uh, electrical in here or something. So uh, I don't I don't know that we'll ever hook up sewer out here, but you might as well do it. <laughs> just think you might as well have a pipe sitting there. Otherwise, you got to cut through the concrete. So that's all set. They're coming 
this week Friday to pour this and then the building which is an 18 by 40 steel metal building uh, it's gonna look like the barn a little bit dark red silver roof pull up door side door and five windows um, I'll do a video on that. I'm guessing it'll start uh, in about four weeks. Should be pretty cool. So uh, coming to the end of this video, I want to make one quick note. Someone put a comment on one of my last videos and said, Doc, I've been told that even during the fall and the winter, I need, my, I need to water my lawn once or twice a month. And I think I answered you. Bermuda roots, if you have a warm season lawn, Bermuda, Bermuda roots are deep. I mean, they can go as deep as 36 inches. And there's plenty of moisture way down there. I would not. I never watered. Once my lawn goes dormant, I never water. I don't worry about it. You can't kill off Bermuda <laughs> when it's dormant. So what I'm doing right now is we're getting ready to do a winter overseed. And we're in a drought. And I'm not watering this lawn anymore. I'm just going to let it kind of go into dormancy just because it's so dry out here. And then tomorrow, John's coming out. And we're going to start to scalp this down lower. Uh, hopefully, I mean, you look at the 10-day forecast, and it's 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%. I think it's 10 days from now, it bumps up to 15%. So we're going to start scalping this down, but I really am holding off on this winter overseed until <laughs> until I see some, some water from Mother Nature. I just don't want to be out here running. I water this, my shallow well I use for irrigation out here, and I really don't want to be running that on here. My fields... I'm telling you, I'm tired of watering. I, we have a commitment to the wildlife out here. And every day for two hours, I am running this high pressure pump. I'm running it up there on all my fields. And my fields are absolutely gorgeous with clover and radish and turnips and peas and all kinds of stuff. And I have hundreds and hundreds of deer coming in there. Um, but I am, I, I just, we really need some rain. It's good. All the trees, I don't know if you can see them. I don't know if you can see them, but those trees are all turning brown. No fall colors. They're just there's they're just turning yellow and brown. There are no fall colors out here, which is kind of sad this year. It's so dry. Anyways, guys, please do me that one favor. Go over and subscribe to Savage Prepping on YouTube. That'll help us out. We're almost up to a thousand subscribers. It's not that big of a deal, but we do want to get that channel up, mainly to get the information out so I could help people. Uh, and that's it. I'll talk to you later. Doc. Thank you.